morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer for Monday the 26th of April, the Feast of St Mark. My name is Catherine Boyer and I'm the Dean of Newcastle and I acknowledge that the Cathedral, Christchurch Cathedral Newcastle stands on a Wabakal land, always was and always will be. I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging and pray that I with the Cathedral community may join with them in a spirit of reconciliation in caring for all that God has entrusted to us in the good gifts of creation. Today for the Feast of St Mark, our psalm is Psalm 19 and our reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12. Morning prayer for Monday morning can be found in the prayer book on page 390. Christ is risen, Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Our opening canticle, a song of God's marvellous acts. I will sing a new hymn to my God. O Lord, you are great and marvellous. You are marvellous in your strength, invincible. Let the whole creation serve you, for you spoke and all things came to be. You sent out your spirit and it formed them. No one can resist your voice. Mountains and seas are stirred to their depths. Rocks melt like wax at your presence. But to those who revere you, you still show mercy. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 19, which is on page 239 of the prayer book. Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. One day tells it to another, and night to night communicates knowledge. There is no speech or language, nor are their voices heard. Yet their sound has gone out through all the world and their words to the ends of the earth. There he has pitched a tent for the sun, which comes out as a bridegroom from his chamber and rejoices like a strong man to run his course. Its rising is at one end of the heavens and its circuit to their father's bound. There is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The command of the Lord is true and makes wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are unchanging and righteous every one. More to be desired are they than gold even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, than the honey that drips from the comb. Moreover, by them is your servant taught, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can know their own unwitting sins? O oh, cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep your servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they get the mastery over me so I shall be clean and innocent of great offence. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Almighty God, you have conquered death through your dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, and open to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant us by your grace to set our mind on things above, 
so that by your continual help, our whole life may be transformed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit in everlasting glory. Amen. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, starting at the 25th verse. Then after completing their mission, Barnabas and Saul returned to Jerusalem and brought with them John, whose other name was Mark. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manson, a member of the court of Herod the ruler, and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the synagogue of the Jews, and they had John also to assist them. When they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, they met a certain magician, a Jewish false prophet named Bar-Jesus. He was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man who summoned Barnabas and Saul and wanted to hear the word of God. But the magician, Eliimus, for that is the translation of his name, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, You son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, full of all deceit and villainy, will you not stop making crooked the straight paths of the Lord? And now listen, the hand of the Lord is against you, and you will be blind for a while, unable to see the sun. Immediately mist and darkness came over him, and he went about groping for someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed, for he was astonished at the teaching about the Lord. Then Paul and his companions set sail from Paphos and came to Perga in Pamphylia. John, however, left them and returned to Jerusalem. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. Our second canticle, a song of Isaiah. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. On that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing God's praises, who has triumphed gloriously. Let this be known in all the world. Shout and sing for joy, you that dwell in Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, by the inspired witness of Mark the Evangelist, you have given to your church the gospel of Jesus Christ, your Son. Strengthen us by this saving message, that we may not be carried away with every changing wind of doctrine but be firmly grounded in the truth of your word, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. 
Amen. So let us pray. Encouraged by our fellowship with all the saints, let us make our prayers to the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, your Son called men and women to leave the past behind them and to follow him as his disciples in the way of the cross. Look with mercy upon those whom he calls today, marks with the cross and makes his disciples within the church. We pray for Peter, our Bishop, for Sonia and Charlie, our Assistant Bishops, for Arthur and Rod, our Archdeacons, for Coralie, our Diocesan Chief Executive Officer. We pray for the parishes and ministries in which we share. We pray for all who are preparing for baptism and confirmation at this time. And we give thanks for those who answer the call to serve God in the ordained and religious life. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Your son told his disciples not to be afraid, and at Easter breathed on them his gift of peace. Look with mercy upon the world into which he sent them out, and give it that peace for which it longs. We pray for all who are called to leadership, for our Prime Minister Scott Morrison, for Gladys Berejiklian, our Premier, for New Italy Elms, the Lord Mayor of this city, and Tim Crackenthorpe and Sharon Clayden, who represent us at state and federal level. We give thanks for those who are entrusted with the rollout of the vaccine at this time, and for all whose work enables us to live safely and well as a community, praying especially for our healthcare and frontline workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son formed around him a company who were no longer servants but friends, and he called all those who obeyed him his brother and sister and mother. Look with mercy upon our families and our friends and upon the communities in which we share. We pray for the First Nations people of the diocese, the Awabakal, Biripai, Darkenyung, Garigal, Gaiwegal, Gamilaroi, Wanarua and Waramai peoples. And we pray for reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Son sent out disciples to pre preach and heal the sick. Look with mercy on those who yearn to hear the good news of salvation and renew among your people the gifts of healing. We pray for those this day who will feel lost or lonely or anxious, for those who will watch and wait for those for whom this day will be their last, and for those for whom this day will be a day of salvation and rejoicing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Son promised to those who followed him that they would sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel and would share the banquet of the kingdom. According to your promise, Look with mercy on those who have walked with Christ in this life and now have passed through death. We give thanks for the witness of your servant Mark and for all those who have proclaimed your gospel in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. May we rekindle the gift of God within us. Amen.